so very good morning uh, this is ron uh, am i audible anyone please am i audible yes, okay very good morning uh, this is ron uh, uh, so in the last class uh, you guys have studied about the uh, diversity is going on right yes sir uh, so in the last class so that uh, uh, you guys have discussed all the differences among platform, round worm, and ring worms, right? So in this class, now we will discuss further in this chapter, like the body symmetry. Okay. So oh, the, what is symmetry generally? Best, best. The symmetry is something which we can divide. Like uh, we have different types of symmetrical, right? That we have asymmetrical, we have radial symmetrical, and we have bilateral symmetry, right? Why do we need to study about the symmetry? That we can classify our names from uh, for a distinction to get the uh, distinct vision about the uh, uh, organism, right? Like we are human beings. In human beings, if we cut it out into equal halves, so that is called bilateral symmetry. Asymmetry, there's a lot of organisms which has not a regular shape, right? So in regular shape, they don't have, like if you talk about amoeba, they don't have regular shape. If they feed, that uh, the feeding materials will go engulfed by that. And that is amoeba. So we can say that is asymmetrical. Like we have a starfish. In a starfish, they had one, two, three, four, five podas. Like arthropoda is something like uh, arthros means jointed and podas means foot. So it's if it is jointed foot, so we call it arthropodas. So like in a starfish also, we uh, we have uh, starfish. It is radial symmetry. Radial symmetry is something like we can cut uh, at any how we have to cut by. Uh, from the two ways, right? That radial symmetry. So, like you can see in the screen, it's a screen visible. Hello. No, sir. The screen is not visible. Oh, sorry, sorry for that. Okay. So, is it now visible? Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, we are just talking about the body symmetry and the symmetry of the uh, living organisms. So we have uh, three types of symmetry in higher classes. If you go for higher classes, you will get many types of symmetry. But in generally, we have asymmetry and symmetry. In symmetry, we have different types of symmetry like bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry. Bilateral symmetry is something like we can cut any organism in two equal halves. The, that is called bilateral symmetry and radial symmetry uh, like we have, we will cut any organisms like uh, two ways. If you cut and two ways in equal equal parts, that is called radial symmetry, right? So, and asymmetry is something which organisms which cannot uh, cut into uh, like equal halves. So that is called asymmetry. So we have many organisms like amoeba, starfish, housefly, humans. So human beings that is bilateral symmetry. So if we cut, if you talk about the morphologicals, like we can't talk about the uh, physiology. So if you talk about the uh, uh, morphology of human beings, if we cut ourselves into two equal halves, so there will be have we have we will have uh, separate legs, separate uh, hands, then separate body, then we have everything separate, like right? but internally it is not separate. So just we are talking about the morphological, right? So uh, if it uh, if you cut into two equal halves, that is bilateral symmetry. So in starfish, you can say any line passing through the center. So if there is center, and if from center, if we, uh, for example, if you stick, I took uh, one, if I took this one, and if I put center here, and from the center, if we pass through this, if I will cut this three, if I cut this copy from the center of this, so if I cut from this side, then it will also divide it into equal parts. If I cut from this side, that is also divided into equal parts. If I cut from this side, that is also divided into equal parts. So that is called radial symmetry. So in amoeba, so this is showing that two uh, two halves will never be similar to each other. So like amoeba, why it's not uh, similar to each other? Because uh, maybe amoeba doesn't have their physical shape. They don't have regular shape. Like in human beings, we have regular shape. In housefly, we have regular shape. In uh, starfish, there is a regular shape. But amoeba doesn't have their regular shape. So if we uh, so if we divide amoeba, so it won't be always equal. There will be never equal in the amoeba. So they, these are called asymmetricals, which shows no symmetry. Then we have starfish. So any line passing through the center along any radius, we take like I I took the copies and I divided from any radius. If we cut out, it will be uh, equally. So if from any side we cut and it should be passed through the center, so we can say that is radial symmetry. Then housefly, it will be divided into 
uh, two similar halves only from one plane. Like in housefly, for example, uh, like in, in 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 human beings also, we we will cut from this side only. Then only equal parts will be divided. But if I will cut from this side, so uh, see this one, this diagram is there. So from this side, if I will cut, so we can say that is bilateral symmetrical. But if I will cut from this type, so it won't be bilateral symmetrical, right? It won't be two equal parts. Okay. So that is bilateral symmetrical, which we found in uh, human beings and housewives. Then what is the body direction? So this is the very uh, basic things we have to learn in this. What is the basic? Like in the higher classes when we used to go, so people used to confuse what is dorsal and what is ventral. So for example, this is me. So my the uh, upper person, like like uh, that forward. So forward, that stomach region, right? So that is called, uh, that is ventral region, like anterior region, that is ventral region. And from the back, back we can say that is dorsal. So uh, to uh, identify any organs, we need to study about the body directions. Like there is a, a for, more, uh, for the systematics to classify the organs. This is a very basic thing that we should know which one is the anterior portion, which one is the posterior portion, what is dorsal, what is ventral, and what is lateral. So we'll discuss uh, it is very basic, but it is very important if you go for higher studies as for anything. So anterior research. So we can say that anterior was something which is on the front. So that is anterior. And what is posterior? So that is something with the behind. Okay. So that is from the back side that we can say posterior. And uh, for the uh, front side, we can say anterior. And what is dorsal? Dorsal is something that is uh, relating to the back or the upper side of the body. So we can say what is dorsal. So from the back side, we talk about that is dorsal side. Okay, so if we are human beings, okay, so if you human beings, so I can say that this is the my uh, ventral side, okay. If so, uh, they, they have predicted one, uh, depicted one pictures of rabbit. So you can see that the uh, mouth region that is a front side that is anterior, right, and the, from the behind that is posterior, and that upper side that is behind. So that is dorsal region uh, uh, from the ground away from the ground, if we go from away from the ground, so if the animal is like that, so we can say that is the dorsal part, that is the ventral part, that is the anterior part, and that is on his posterior part. So uh, that uh, dorsal region is away from the ground, the ventral region is uh, towards the ground, and the anterior is in the front, and the posterior is the behind. So that is the very basic things that we, we uh, if we talk about anything, that if, even in the general, speaking we used to use these terminologies so what is lateral so lateral i can say that is long side this side so that is uh, if we if i sleep like that so that will become my uh, that will become my and that my back will become that my leg become posterior and my uh, front side uh, not front side that is a uh, stomach side it will become ventral and that is dorsal and that that uh, corner side it will become lateral like left or right so that is the body directions then uh, that is uh, phylum mollusca 78 okay so there is a, a lot of hierarchy we have to study to the classify or organisms like we have kingdom phylum class uh, order family genus species a species is the lowest uh, hierarchy classification in the animal kingdom or uh, any uh, organism in the world so that is uh, a very simple trick if you want to remember but that is keep copies it is very, uh, if you remember this trick, you will never forget the hierarchy of the living organisms. Keep, cough, yes. So from ki, it will become kingdom. From P, it will belongs to phylum. Then it will become class. After that, it will become order. Then it will become from family, that is genus and species. So uh, if you confuse then which one will come in the kingdom, which one after, or which will come in phylum. So you can remember this trick, keep, cough, yes. So kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So this is the hierarchy. So uh, in the uh, earlier classes, you have discussed about the many of the uh, phylums. So now that is phylum mollusca. So what is molluscus? So mollusca is something a snail. They have shell. Shell like uh, uh, when uh, when we go to the sea region or we go to the any beach or we go to the any uh, ponds. So we found a lot of things is there. Like we have ponds. Uh, if we go to the beach or sea areas or ocean region, we found a lot of molluscus in there, like snail, slug, oyster, mussels, clams, squid, and octopus. So 
they these organisms release some carbohydrates how how it will convert like in uh, if we talk about sea oceans so in oceans there is a salty region we can say that is saline water is there so what will happen so in the oceans there is a lot of uh, minerals or present is there like a lot of minerals there they release some uh, carbon carbonate material right that carbonate material that organisms have the capacity that they take that carbonate and build their shells for the protection from the other organisms so that will become the shell so that is most of the shells are uh, developed by the calcium carbonate right so uh, that is the another phylum we have mollusca and mollusca there is examples like snail snail you can see that mollusca these are the examples of snail like this one is snail snail is a paste like in cabbage or in cauliflower uh, uh, vegetables these are the most invasive pests like they used to eat it and they destroy the whole crops in the seedling stage only so they are snail then slug then oyster mussels we are so we can see that mussels so you can see that the seal one so the the uh, molluscus uh, it means in, in like if you want to study any biological word now so we have to break it the we have to if we break the words it will come out the one definitions so mollusca is something that is covered with the shell so which organisms which have developed some shells that we can say that is belong from mollusca so we have mussels we have chiton like that we have many examples so these are the some um, examples of the mollusca then we have phylum echinodermata echinodermata is something that is spiny skinned animals that is starfish brittle star sea urchin and sea cucumber so see the nature how beautiful nature is like every organisms they have developed their uh defensive behavior they have developed their defensive uh, or uh, organ in their body to uh, escape from the predator right so echinodermata is something which is a spiny skin animals so in starfish if you have seen the starfish like if i show you one video of a starfish so what will happen is starfish release some toxic material if some predator will come to catch the starfish so they will uh, like uh, like gun point they throw some spines to the predator animals to save from them uh, from to save from themselves so then uh, sea urchin like this is the organisms if you touch this organisms most of the in oceans we go we go to the down then we found these types of uh, uh, organisms like we have brittle star then we have sea cucumber like sea cucumber that is a seafood okay so sea urchin starfish brittle star so uh, they these uh, organisms they have their defensive organs developed in their body so to uh, save from the predator so if any predator will come to the catch to them so they will uh, they have some physiology that they will uh, throw some spines they will throw some toxins but in this echinodermata we see that most of the organs they have connected with the spines like starfish then brittle star sea urchin and sea cucumber so what is echinodermata so it is unsegmented what is segmentation so segmentation is something like if we have one this one uh, just look at this line so if we divide this thing so we can say that is segments like uh, every, uh, we divide something that we can say that is the different different segments so if there will be uh, equal segments then we can say there is a segments like we talk about earthworm so earthworm has segmented body like we have different different annuals they have different different annuals so we can say that is segmented like in a uh, uh, we can say about the uh, insects insect is also segmented right they have head thorax and abdomen so that is segmented then what is unsegmented they don't have any segments can you see any head thorax abdomen you can't see can you see any uh, pattern here oh that is a starfish but we cannot see a uh, annuals pattern so that's why it is unsegmented and it is marine animals so they have exoskeleton and what is exoskeleton so exoskeleton is the, the primary rules of exoskeleton like what we have skeletal system like we have we are humans we have a skeleton so we have a skeletal system that is support our muscles that is support our muscles that muscles is covered to the bones the skeleton and that's how we are standing on our body like that we have exoskeleton in every organisms so they have exoskeleton and they have a spiny surface to hold to they have regular shell right they are not amoeba amoeba doesn't have exoskeleton but they have their exoskeleton so they can have a regular shell so they have exoskeleton and spiny surface on their body so they move by means of tube feet so in the tube feet how it should be it is very minute 
the found in the body of the starfish it is very minute and two feet is something that uh, when they move from one to place so they use that tube they use tube and they crawl from one place to another place so they are radial symmetrical they have similar parts like usually they have five regularly around the central points so that is all about the echinodermata let's talk about the phylum codata that is vertebrata so we generally know uh, according to the uh, bone structure that is vertebrata and invertebrata let's talk about the phylum codata okay so uh, all codata possess a notochord like notochord which is a rod like structure present in the mid dorsal axis of the body except the few primitive forms in which the notochord persists throughout the life in all other in all others it is replaced by a backbone vertebral column what we have that is vertebral column that vertebral column that supports our body to stand at the place when during the evolution evolution of the human beings what happened first time that was homo sapiens before homo sapiens they are cro magnon and before that the human beings that what we said that we said about that homo sapiens before that homo erectus was there so what is human erectus from homo erectus we developed in the homo sapiens so homo erectus was the first uh, uh, human beings that they have developed uh, and they stand with their uh, actually what was happening so if human beings were crawling on the road we can't say that humans but during the evolution uh, that uh, what we said that uh, chimpanzees and the monkeys so they were crawling on the road but something uh, mutations has happened in their genes and because of that mutations that the uh, the animals which were able to crawl on the road they stand so after standing there something has changed and vertebral crown has developed so on that time whatever the animals that was that is homo erectus so erectus means which can uh, which can stand erect like straight line like they can uh, they can stand and erect side like okay they, they can stand so that is homo erectus and what is homo sapiens homo sapiens is something that we, which have continuous life process homo homo means humans and uh, sapiens means which is continuous life so they develop that it, uh, standing here so we can say that homo sapiens like that we have vertebral column so that because of that vertebral vertebral column we can stand anywhere okay so that is uh, the notochord so vertebrates have a well developed vertebral column forming the main axis of their internal skeleton uh, have a head trunk two pair of appendages gill slits are present and sometime in their life so where we found gills we generally found gills in fish so gill slits are present at some time in their life vertebrates are divided into five classes that is comprising of fishes frogs lizards birds and hairy quadrupeds okay so we will discuss we will see the photos and the diagram of the every organisms and we'll discuss like see that we have amphibians amphibian is what the animals which can live either in the terrest uh, which can live in in terrestrial region and which can live in the aquatic region so we can say that is amphibians what is mammals mammals is the organisms which can which can produce offspring not eggs if it will produce eggs so we can't say that is mammal but if something that can produce offspring directly by the young ones they directly produce young ones that we can say mammals or simply we can say the animals which can uh, uh, feed their young ones by the breast we can say that so the animals which can uh, feed their uh, organisms uh, young ones and they used to uh, like in, in, in our animals so that we can say that mammals so there are a lot of definitions but the basic definition is the mammals which can reproduce their young ones directly that like we can say that bat bat is mammal why because their offspring they feed like from the breast the bat used to feed their offspring from the breast so we can say that is mammal and they direct they do not produce that is we can say that is uh, looks like a bird but that mammal is directly produce offspring their young ones not an a like other animals like uh, we talk about the bird so they they are the bird like they lay eggs after from the eggs they will hatch after then hatch after them will start uh, continue their life so that is bird then fish fish that fish is aquatic animals they have tail fin so these all are the examples of vertebrata 
and they all are come in the core data. So we have core data and non-core data. So we are talking about the core data. Then we have reptiles. Reptiles also they have exoskeleton present in their uh, body. Okay, in mammals you can see in every animals there will be bones presence like exoskeleton. Because of that exoskeleton they have their definite shape. Like then we have reptiles. Reptiles they they have some uh, gluish hand. These are the very interesting things of reptiles. They have something uh, uh, that can control the, by the use of some forces. They can able to uh, stick on the walls and they can jump anywhere. So that's the, these all are the examples of uh, vertebrata. So uh, now we we'll discuss about the classification of animal kingdom. Animal kingdom is a very different, uh, very interesting subject. Like in higher classes, if you go, so you this this. Uh, basic things you should learn about this you should have very confident in these basic things so what is animal kingdom so animal kingdom is divided into two parts that is invertebrata vertebrata invertebrata there is a lot of phylum in that phylum there is one codata so like notopod vertebral column present heart on ventral side ventral side so just, just uh, in earlier in the start beginning of the classes we have talked about the body directions so what is uh, ventral side so ventral side is something which can from the uh, if if the uh, if the rabbit is like that, so that is that is dorsal side, that is ventral side, that is anterior side, and that is posterior side. So what is ventral side? So ventral side is something that present on the this part. Like if rabbit slip like that, so that is the ventral side. So the heart of the uh, phylum Podata present on the ventral side. Nerve cord on dorsal side. So the nerve cord present like if we, if we talk about so, see, if this one is, imagine this one is a, this one is a uh, animal. So that is dorsal side, that is ventral side, that is posterior side, that is anterior side, and this one, this side. See, this one side, this one side, it is lateral side. So if there is animal, if there is animal, so what will happen? So in phylum codata, most of the heart, the animals which belongs in phylum codata, their hearts is in the ventral side. Where side? Ventral side. So where is ventral side? So if, if this is animal, so heart will present this side, not this side. So it will present on this side, that is ventral side. And nerve cord is present on dorsal side. Dorsal side means this side. So if there will be elementary canal, so from the elementary canal, it will present on the ventral side, heart is present on ventral side, and that nerve cord present on the dorsal side. Then hemoglobin content, they have hemoglobin content that is RBC, like red blood corpuscles. And the common example are species, birds, and humans. In uh, in the invertebrates, we have different level of organization, like on the cellular level of classification, we have tissue level of organization, then organ system level of organization. If you talk about the cellular level of organisms, for example, what is why we do we need to about cellular level, tissue level, organ system like? So we know that any organs which have evolved, they, they brought from the cell to cell. So from the cell, so from the cell, it will become tissue. From the tissue, it will become organs. From the organs, it will become organ system. After the composition of many organ system, it will become one body like that. So during the evolution, when the uh, when the a lot of things happen after the big bang, so uh, when the human beings, uh, not human beings, when the organs started developing in the solar system. In our earth, when the humans uh, that uh, organs started in the evolving, so the first uh, the cell which was developed from that is cell from that cell where every organ that was a very simple cell from that that simple cell bacteria first time the one bacteria has come, uh, developed from that bacteria a lot of many separation has happened a lot of mutations has happened after that that will become tissue from the tissue to tissue uh, organ system. From the organ system, it will become after the composition of organ system, it will become one body. Like that is from the simple uh, cellular level to the complex multicellular organs. So in during the lot of processes happen happen from the last many crores of years. So on because of that evolution, that classification is divided. But still we have several level several level of organs we still have. So these are the organs which are the oldest animals on the living on the earth. So we have several level like phylum Porifera. Porifera with spore bearers, aquatic fixed type, spongy fiber for protection and spongy cycle. So we'll discuss everything. Uh, I think Porifera, they have not given the figures. Okay, we'll discuss the figures. Like Porifera, 
porifera is pore bearers. I will just show you one picture of porifera. See, this one is porifera. See, these are the cellular level of organelles. Cellular level of organelles means something like they don't have their complex uh, body structures. So these are the cellular level of organizations. So we can see there are a lot of pores present in that organism. So there is a lot of pores present in that organism. So that is called porifera. Porifera means porous. You can remember this porifera is something which is pore-like structures. So these are the pore-like structures. They actually, they have only one types of pathway for the uh, excretory material, even for the uh, ingestion material. So whatever the food materials, it will come, that will go from this side and whatever the excretory material they will release, they will come from that side only. So that is the very cellular level of organization and the very simple uh, organisms that is porifera. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, so uh, that is porifera. So, pore bearers, aquatic fixed types. So, these animals generally found in the sea beaches when we go deep down to the uh, oceans on seas. That is porifera. So, spongy fibers for protections. They have a spongy fiber for the protection. If any predatory material uh, animals, they will come to uh, catch it. They can't catch it because they they have every animal, every human. What we can every organism they have defensive behavior, like human beings, like cheetahs, like animals. So every organisms, when the nature has developed any organisms, so they have developed their defensive behavior, how to escape from the, their predators. Okay, so spongy forages, sponges and cyclone are the common examples of porifera. Then we have tissue level of organization. In tissue level of organizations, we have phylum kinidaria, nidaria. So uh, two layered body wall, radially symmetrical. So what is neat area? So it is a two layered body wall that is radially symmetrical. They have epidermis and gastrodermis presence. So uh, you can remember how, what is epidermis? So if you break this word epidermis and gastrodermis, so what is epidermis? So dermis means something that is skin. Dermis, you have seen like, if you talk, we go to the doctors. So we can, we are, I have some skin problem. I will go to the dermatologist. So what is dermis? That means something which is related to skin only. The skin that is called epidermis. And what is gastrodermis? So gastric means what? Gastric means gastro means related to the stomach. Like we said, gastric juice, gastrologist. If we have problem in the stomach, we go to the gastrologist. So that is gastro. So gastrodermis means we are talking about dermis means skin and gastros means stomach. So we are talking about the uh, stomach uh, part of the stomach that what we call gastric, where the digestion has has been happened. So that skin we are talking about is so gastrodermis is present and they have tentacles and sticking cells. Tentacles is something like if I have this one, if I have this, so in tentacles, what I mean, the small spiny fibers present on that body. So that is called tentacles and stinging cells. Stinging cells, what is stinging cells? So something which can sting like sting. So stinging cells, they can throw, they can uh, from the stinging cells, like if they have tentacles, tentacles, they use for the predator, uh, for the defensive behavior to defend other organisms. They use tentacles and then sticking cells. So uh, bisexual, they are bisexual. What is bisexual? So we can say like bisexual, the organisms which have uh, male and female present on the same body that is called bisexual. So and we can say that their fertilization has happened in the same body. So that we can say that bisexual. So generally, what we say that bisexual is the animals. Uh, which present had uh, male or female present in the same body. That is called bisexual. Then organ and organ system level.
Then we have organ and organ system level of classification. In organ and organ system of classification, we have a silometer and isolometer. Silometer is something silome. Silome. If you break the word, then we can get the definitions. So silome is something like if this one is uh, so something that is silome. In that silome, a lot of things present. So, uh, if you talk about any organisms, if you talk about any organisms, so in the uh, uh, if you talk about the lower organisms, what will happen? Their whole things present in the silom. So, which uh, which doesn't have their silom, so we can say that is the tubular like structure. So that is silom. In that silom only, the digestive system, their nerves, called their elementary color, that all all pass through this system. So that is called silom. So the organisms which uh, most of the organ uh, that system is not passed through that that we can we can say that that is acylomate and the we can say that the animals which doesn't have cavity which doesn't have cavity we can say acylomate and the animals which have present their body cavity so we can say that is silomate so this is the uh, one tubular like structure and in that all those things that is that is body cavity present so we can say that is silomate like that in organisms also they have acylomate and uh, silomata so in acylomata we have platyhelminthus that nematoda okay so platyhelminthus what something that is plate i told you now if you break the word we can understand the meaning of the uh, that terminology so plate means flat plate means what plate plate like a structure like that is flat so we can say that is platyhelminthus helminthus means helminthus is the other name of the nematodes like right? and what is uh, nematode see what will happen uh, in organisms of the nematode? One is divided. Helminthology, we can say like helminthology, the person who only study about the nematode like organism. What is nematode? That the organisms which is pseudocilomer, they don't have their body cavity true, they don't have their true body cavity, they are bilateral symmetrical, they don't have circulation and circulatory system. So we can say that is nematoda. So in platyhelminthus, the what is platyhelminthus? So platyhelminthus is bilateral symmetrical. It is free living as well as parasitic. A free uh, that is free living and it will also parasitic. Like what is parasitic? So the organisms which can uh, affect or we can kill other organisms, we can say that is parasitic. So it is flat. Flat means so I can I told you that uh, platy means you can consider flat. It is unsegmented one. So I told you what is segmented, unsegmented. So they don't have their proper annuals present in their body structures. So we can say that is unsegmented. Their body cavity absent. Their body cavity. So if I talk about this is a silom. So in that silom, there will be some. Uh, if you talk about the silomate, so in that that is just present goes through this silomate. Okay, that uh, elementary canal kind of pass through this silomate. So we can say they are the silometer. But they, these platy helminthus, they don't they don't have their uh, body cavity. So we can say that is a silometa. So this is bisexual. What is bisexual? The same male and female present in the same organisms. So we can say that is bisexual. And they have only one opening. So why, what, what one opening? So one opening means they have to ingest food material, materials from this opening only, and they have to extract their secretion from this opening only. Okay, so that is one opening. Like in plan area, that is plan area and liver fluke tape one. Okay, so liver fluke you have seen? Anyway, yeah, priaria have you heard? Also, planaria. See, these are the pla planaria organisms. So these are the organisms. If you talk about the tapeworm, tapeworm that is parasitic. Liver fluke is also parasitic in other organisms. Then planaria. Planaria is free living. It doesn't affect any uh, organisms. So planaria is free living, and it, it like uh, if you go to higher studies, that it is the one of the best example of the regeneration. If you cut planaria like that in equally collapse, 
that every organs will different in equal equal the individual organs. So that is planaria. Liver fluke, like it is also parasitic in human beings. Liver fluke, it damages the uh, our livers. Then tapworm, that is parasitic uh, parasitic worm, and these are the uh, they cause a lot of disease. They also carry some diseases uh, to the human beings. So these are the uh, phylum platyhelminthes. Then we have phylum nematoda. Phylum nematoda is something that is soft cylindrical. Unsegmented body, they have two openings. Like if I talk about the platyhelminthes. Platyhelminthes only one top, only one opening. But in nematoda, they have two opening. Two opening. Like if okay, so they will ingest food materials from the from this material, and they have their excretory material. So that is, uh, I will. Show you the clear image of nematoda. So this is how nematode looks like. A lot of different, different. If you talk about different, different spaces, different, different nematode is there. So this is the mouth part, and this one is the. And as part, so they have excrete. They have separate openings for the excretory. They uh, excrete their materials from the anal region and they ingest their material from the mouth region. So they have two openings and they are parasitic in nature. Ascaris, we have seen about ascaris. Ilworm, filarial worm. Filarial worm is something that is uh, elephantiasis. There is one disease that is called elephantiasis. That elephantiasis is caused by because of filaria. Hathi pa. In Hindi, people used to say "hathi pa ho jana." So that is filarial worm. Then Ascaris lumbricoides. Ascaris lumbricoides, like in the stomach, sometimes you feel a lot of pains in the stomach. What happened? What happened? We go to the doctor, and the doctor used to say this one present in your stomach. So you have to eat this medicine, and that uh, that uh, worm will be killed. So that is Ascaris lumbricoides. So it will always present in our uh, stomach region. Sometimes we feel pain. They uh, uh, like a, a obligate parasitism. That is obligate parasitism. They live in our stomach. They derive nutrients from our food and uh, they survive in the stomach. And sometimes when it will grow up, it will grow larger. So it will start paining us, and we consult the doctors, and they will give some medicines then. So we have stomata. That is body cavity present. Then in Solomata we have Annelida. Annelida is a common example is Arthrum. Then Arthropoda, whatever the insect you you know, that is Arthropoda. Then Mollusca, just we have talked about the Mollusca. Then we have Phylum Echinodermata. Echinodermata, just we have just talked about the Phylum Echinodermata. Okay, the pine, the spiny one. So let's see uh, the phylum Annelida. So in Silometa, there is a lot of uh, phylum that is phylum Annelida, phylum Arthropoda, phylum Mollusca, and phylum Echinodermata. In phylum Annelida, it, they are soft, they are segmented body. So as I told you, what is segmented, unsegmented? So in segmented, in unsegmented, there will be uh, there will be no any distinction between the body region, thorax region, stomach region. So they don't have distinction. But if you talk about the uh, Annelida, they have segmented body. Okay. So Annelida, how earthworm looks like? So in earthworms, there annulus like uh, a structure is developed in their body. So this is how earthworm looks like. So they have different different annulus. So you can say that is segmented. But in nematoda, it is not segmented. There is no any morphological structure, and there is no any segmentation found in the nematoda and the platyhelminthes. In annelida, there will be segmentation, so that is called segmented body. They have two openings, like anal region, mouth region. They have present two body cavities. They there they have two silom present in their body, like that. From that silom, the digestive tract is passed through, the nerve cord is going to pass through. So that is called silomate. They have excretion through nephridia, like we have different different all in. In, we will discuss about like gills. We have excretion through gills in fishes, gill, through gills. Then in arthropoda, through spiracles in insect. Most of the uh, uh, excretion happens through um, 
that spiracles then uh, so in annelida the excretion uh, happened through nephridia like earthworm leech leech generally found in the patties field like they have mandibular sectorial mouth they suck your like when uh, they attach to the body so these are the animals the leech is the only animals so they can uh, feed on your uh, feed on your skin but you won't get pain so they, and they start getting they suck your blood and after some time you feel that leech is attacked on my skin so they have some chemicals which release on the body so you like an anesthesia it causes like they release some anesthetic chemicals so leech when they attack to the skin so they release some anesthesia and you won't feel that su someone is sucking your blood so after when they uh, the chemical uh, like chemical activity will exhaust after then you get to know that someone is sucking my blood so it will after then it will pen so leech is generally found in that they also have segmentation then we have phylum arthropoda so arthropoda you can divide like arthro means jointed pod as means foot so jointed foot so that we can say uh, the paired foot the the organisms which have paired foot that we can say arthropoda so body divided in three parts head thorax and abdomen head thorax and abdomen like that the uh, that uh, insects also have head thorax and abdomen and exosome which molts jointed legs molting something like they goes through the different different phases okay so in uh, so what happened first first molting it will develop in other form after the second molting third molting fourth molting so different different morphological structures there then they have this jointed legs so jointed legs so arthropoda is derived from uh, greek word and which means jointed legs then we have mollusca we have discussed about the mollusca and echinodermata Okay. So now we are going to discuss about the vertebrate classes. So in the vertebrate classes, we have fishes that is called fishes. The amphibia that is frog that is uh, the organisms which can uh, live on aquatic region as well as terrestrial region. We can say amphibia. Then we have reptiles that is lizards, avis that is called birds, and mammalia that is hairy quadrupeds. Then class species. So I told you that there is a hierarchy. Keep cough just. Remember this. If you remember this, keep cough just. You will never get problem in anywhere in diversity. If they will ask, people sometimes get confused that genus पहले आएगा या species बाद में आएगा. So people used to confuse. So we have kingdom, then we have phylum, we have then class, order, family, genus, and species. And the species is the smallest and the uh, smallest unit of the hierarchy classification. And kingdom is the largest. So we are discussing about kingdom and we have discussed about phylum then in phylum we have discussed about the in codata we are discussing and in that we are discussing about the class species so uh, pieces is generally uh, what about the fish you can remember this acronym like pieces fishes so the class species includes fishes they are completely adapted to aquatic life to machli jal ki rani hai jeevan uska pani hai bahar aayegi to mar jayegi because they are aquatic they are not terrestrial so they have two chambered heart like how what about human beings how many chambered heart we have anyone human beings uh, how many chambered of heart we have so this is heart dorsal ventral so we have four chambered of heart okay like that in fishes they have two chambered heart uh, two chambered of heart so they have two chambered heart breed by means of gills and are cold blooded poikilothermic so what is cold blooded the organisms which uh, uh, which are cold blooded animals like in human mix we have rbc like right? we can adapt if we go to the mountain areas even we can adapt if we go to the side area we can adapt by uh, our body suppression like it won't affect like we can maintain our uh, uh, we can maintain our body after wearing t-shirts and everything but 
the animals which is cold blooded they only adapt in their aquatic region like so they are the cold blooded animals that that is also known as poikilothermic their body temperature fluctuates with the temperature of the environment but our body temperature it doesn't affect with the environment if you go to the usa if you go to the rajasthan also if the temperature is high if the temperature is low our body the blood will be maintained it won't fluctuates but in cold blooded animals we can't directly shift the ocean region uh, fish to the uh, fresh water reserves because their blood uh, because their body temperature will fluctuates and if their body blood, uh, body temperature fluctuates the blood will also affect and they will suddenly die so their all the temperature their all the body uh, physiology is depend on the uh, fluctuation of the uh, temperature so their body is covered with scales they have fins and there is no limbs fins so uh, if there is a fish yes. so if you have ever consumed the uh, fish so you can see that uh, i i think that everybody has seen the fishes so in the fishes they have a scales like if there is fish so they have different different it's shiny like it is present in their body so that is scales so their body is covered with this and they have fins but no limbs there is no limbs present in them like what is limbs limbs something that we have that hands we have fingers they don't have their fingers like that anything they don't have that is called limbs so fishes are of two main types that is cartilaginous fishes Which skeleton is made of cartilage and sharks, dogfish, skates, and bony fishes whose skeleton is made up of bones. So we have two types of. Uh, if you if you have studied uh, in uh, uh, there's one chapter in which they used to talk about the body matrices like uh, bones, cartilage. So what is cartilage? So cartilage they are the soft matrix of the bones. And what is bones? That is hard matrix of the like we can say calcium carbonate or we can say so that is bod bod that is cartilaginous fishes so in cartilaginous fishes their body their bone uh, they are not the hard matrix they are the soft matrix so they that is called cartilage cartilaginous fishes whose skeleton is made up of cartilage not with the uh, that means it has bones but it is soft matrix not a hard matrix if you talk about uh, uh, if you talk about uh, one tusk tusk of the elephant's tusk so that is hard matrix of the bones and if you talk about the uh, if you talk about the uh, like the bones of uh, that fishes so that is cartilage so that is soft body uh, soft matrix of the bones so uh, like that is, what are the examples of cartilaginous fishes so that is sharks dogfish skates and in the bony fishes whose skeleton is made up of bones that is calves roaches herrings and trouts so these are the animals which has cartilaginous fishes and we have bony fishes then gill slit is bony fishes are concealed under gill cover that is called operculum with those in cartilaginous fishes are exposed without a gill cover see these 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 things were the Cut, uh, that is or the scales okay in that uh, in that scales so the gill slits is bony fishes are considered under a gill cover while those in cartilaginous fishes are exposed without a gill cover so Uh, the uh, in the cartilaginous fishes whatever the gill that is without the gill cover and in the uh, that is uh, other fishes like in bony fishes that is considered in the gill gill cover is uh, considered with that uh, gill slits and in the cartilaginous fishes it is uh, there is no any concealation and these are without the gill cover so these are the uh, basic introduction of the that is uh, class fishes then we come to the class amphibia in the amphibia we have frog toad salamander and newt so 
what is frog and toad okay so they both look like similar but there is differences between toad and the frog okay so amphibians spend a major part of their adult lives on land while their eggs and larval stages are aquatic okay so most of the time they spend they used to come outside from the uh, from the water and they start making nuisance after making nuisance they go inside the water so most of the time they come outside they used to live in terrestrial but uh, to laying in the eggs to lay in the eggs and the for la development of the larval stages they they lay eggs in the water their uh, larvae to develop in the water and when it will uh, become adult they will come outside why it will happen because uh, they are the amphibians and most of the times what will happen uh, they to like uh, there is a predator right in the outside interstellar we have birds and a lot of things so to save from these things nature have developed that they can lay their eggs and their eggs is like that they can uh, float in the water they can they go from one place to another place and sometimes it will reproduce like they produce a lot of eggs uh, like if there is uh, like uh, reproduction there is external reproduction internal reproduction there is one concept is there so internal reproduction something like terrestrial so in external what will happen the uh, the male the male produce a lot of sperms they, they produce a lot of sperms in the water region and that any female which come to the contact with that sperm they will get fertilized so that is a very minute chance that animal get fertilization so in amphibians also whatever they egg their leg in the water and their larva breathe by means of gills so but adult amphibians breathe by means of lungs so that is a two different things two same things that is present in sometimes it have gills also and sometimes it have lungs also in uh, that uh, arthropoda like so they have the uh, they have the organs like they have developed they have their organ system that they can uh, live inside the water and they can live outside the water as well so amphibians have a smooth non scaly moist or slimy skin the eardrum the tympana what is called ear we also have tympanum membrane in our ear so lies on the surface of the skin they have five finger pentadactyl limbs so if you talk about five fingers so we have pentadactyl limbs so can you say that we are pentadactyl yes we can say because we also have five fingers so pentadactyl limbs and three chambered heart they are three chambered heart and they are cold blooded okay cold blooded means their body temperature fluctuates their body temperature fluctuates with the temperature so we can say that they are the cold blooded so we can say during the rainy season only that medhak that toad frog will come outside and they start something when they used to make sounds they are used to uh, like something that they are attracting to the okay so from which portion the connection was disconnected can anyone am i audible Am I audible? Okay. 
So uh, now we will discuss about the class Reptilia. That is their common examples is lizard, snakes, tortoise, turtle, crocodile, alligator, gharial, found only in the rivers of India, Malaysia, and Myanmar. Can anyone tell me that am I audible or not? Yes, sir. So now we'll discuss about the class reptilia, that is lizard, snake. Uh, so what are the uh, reptiles? Reptiles which crawl on the uh, land. So we can say that is reptiles. So whatever the now things we will discuss, that are the they 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 have their they have their characters. That is the common characters that they crawl on the surface of the land. So we can say they belong from the reptiles like lizard. We have seen then snake, then tortoise, then turtle, crocodile. Alligator, gharial, which found in river of India and Malaysia and the Myanmar. So we can say they are the reptiles. So what are reptiles? Reptiles are completely adapted to life on land. Their eggs have a leathery shell. They breathe by means of lungs right from birth. They have uh, rough horny scales on the skin and three chambered heart in which the ventricle is par partially divided. So Ventricle is partially divided. The ear drum, uh, that tympanum, lies at the bottom of a tubular depressions. They are cold blooded. So we have some uh, terminology here. That is horny scales. So they have leathery cell. So they also have cells. Like if we talk about the snake. So snake are very beautiful animals. They have shiny, shining layers in their body. So they used to shine. So these are the leathery cell. They are not, we can't say that is leathery bones like uh, fishes. If you talk about the fishes, they have spines, that fishes, that shine. But they are not that much of heart. Uh, but the leathery shell is not that much heart like fishes, their scales. So these are leathery shells. They breathe by lungs right from the bird. So in a uh, snake, they breathe from the lungs and they have horny scales. Okay, sometimes uh, the other, if you talk about other animals in the reptilia, so they have scales present found in their body on the skin and a three chambered heart they have three chambered heart in which the ventricle is partially divided the eardrum lies at the bottom of a tubular depression and they are cold blooded they also cannot uh, maintain their body temperature so from the next class uh, we are going to talk about the class avis that is birds so uh, can anyone tell me uh, uh, is uh, whatever I I was telling you, are you getting it? And if there you have any questions and problems, you can just put it out here. Okay. If I won't get any answer, I think the whatever I just shared you that is everything is. Uh -huh. Thank you. So now we'll end the discussions and we'll meet in the next class whenever it will be scheduled. Okay, thanks to all of you. Have a good day.